Hello, Dave here. Um, I want to do a little introduction to this video. If you want to forward this to the actual turning bit, you can. Um, but for those people who actually want to hear a bit of chat, then uh, stay listening. Um, I want to thank everybody for their comments. I uh, really appreciate them. Um, it's great and it's really, really helpful for me. I wanted to bring up a couple of points, actually, that people have commented on. The first one was from Alan Mullock. Um, and he pointed out something that I did which horrified me. Uh, I didn't think about it at the time too closely um, because I was too caught up in the moment. Um, but he pointed out quite rightly that on when I was turning the edges of that round fail bowl, recent sort of one with the wings drooped down, um, I actually and I'm really, really ashamed to say this, I actually use a roughing gouge on end grain. Now, I haven't been struck down by lightning yet, but for clarity, never ever use a roughing gouge, spindle roughing gouge on end grain, no matter how light your cuts are um, or how little you're doing, because it's just not worth the effort. Um, the tank can break, the handle can break, the tank can come out and stab you. It's really not very nice, and uh, I apologise for doing it. So thank you very much, Alan, for pointing that out. Um, absolutely horrified me. Absolutely. I watched it back and I was like, oh my God, no, that's really, really bad. So anyway, thank you, Alan, for that. That's, uh, that's much appreciated. Um, the other comment was from a guy called Luke. Uh, I can't pronounce the um, Luke Van Buchen. Sorry, Luke, about that. Uh, he asked me what the best wood for turning is. Now, my favourite wood... Um, that I've ever that I've turned so far has been you. It's been that little chalice thing I made, uh, Christine and Michael. That wood was beautiful. It hardly needed sanding. It was slightly oil oily. Um, it was it was such a pleasure to turn. Um, I got some more of it, which I'm going to do on this next project. Um, but no, it's it's wicked wood. My next favourite is uh, well, I've got different woods for di uh, different woods for different things. So. Um, I like generally like walnut, it's a close grain wood, it's a really nice colour, handles very nicely. Oak I turn absolutely shed loads off because I've got loads of it. Uh, I use that for everything from glue blocks to little pots to uh, well, everything. Um, my another favourite of mine is ash. Now I love ash on like my little sculpture things I do. Like <sighs> Like this gentleman in the cape. It's got a bit dusty now, but it's like my little gentleman character there. Now, I got comments on this one, strange enough, that there was that saying, oh, you want to use a U UV protection on that one, because then it'll stop it from changing colour. Well, I actually like that colour. I really, really like the fact that this has changed from a light colour. Uh, let's find it. Right, so, so I really like the fact that it changes from that to that. I mean, that to me is beautiful. I love that colour. Uh, it's absolutely just there. Well, I don't need to say any more about that, do I? Really beautiful finish. Anyway, so there we go. So there we go, Luke. That's uh, that's some of my favourite woods to turn. Uh, it's not really one best wood to turn. It depends what you you're doing with it. You know, if you're doing finials, then you need a really tight grain like ebony. That's that's why ebony is so good for finials. Um, I've used purple heart, but it's a little bit more open grain. You don't quite get the uh, you don't quite get the finish that you want um, because of all the holes and things. Um, I don't like doing softwoods too much. I'd much prefer doing hardwoods. Um, but uh, yeah, so so use my favourite uh, walnut ash. Depends what I'm doing with it. Um, different purposes. So on to this project. Now you may have seen uh, the last video where I did a project for the uh, Grit and Sheen Facebook page, which is the chat page for turners who aren't quite as hung up 
as on other groups. Um, seems to be a much more friendly group. It's mainly for discussion on, well it's for discussion on anything, but it's it was set up by uh, Martin and Glyn from Hampshire Sheen and Yorkshire Grit, hence the name Grit and Sheen. Um, but it's a friendly place, we've got over 500 members now, and it's a great place to sort of hang out um, and chat and show you stuff and all that sort of stuff, make new friends. So that's really, really good. Now, this project is going to be very, very similar as far as, as far as, oh, hang on, um, it's going to involve another uh Amp4 style vase. Thank you very much, Dave, by the way, for, for letting me know about that Amp4. That's the style of vase I'm going for. Uh, but instead of having a ring and three walnut legs, what I'm going to do is, and again, it's, it's like a prototype small version. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the stand one piece out of this U. Okay, so what I've got to do is, I've got to, it's going to be an emerging form, so it's going to be emerging vase stand out of you. So that's going to involve in turning this, uh, leaving a ring at the top, and then hollowing it out, and then using my Dremel or other tools to actually create the legs, the individual legs. So I've got to do a lot of looking when I'm turning this. Um, I'm going to have to look at every single stage to see where the grain's running, um, to see where I can take it, to see see exactly what I can do with this. Um, it's a shame that this U hasn't got more of the sort of um, growth material around the outside, more like the piece that I did for Michael and Christine, um, because that would have been lovely just to have like a, a white ring holding the vase. But we'll see what happens. So that's the um, so that's the piece that the emerging forms can be out of, and then the vase will be out of that. Um, so that's going to be interesting. So stick with me. We're going to see what happens. Something else I want to do is uh, give a shout out to Stuart Farini. Um, he's a really good wood turner. Um, who does amazing artistic textures and colours and effects. Um, so go and I'll put his link in below in the description. So go and check out his channel. Uh, it's really worth it. I've known him from, um, well, when I first started actually, there's this uh, online forum, this work, UK workshop, um, and he, he was in there. And in fact, actual fact, he lives um, in the next town to me, he lives in Brighton. And uh, I nearly bought his lathe off him. Sorry about that, Stu. Um, but yeah, so uh, he, he's a great bloke, and definitely, definitely go and watch his videos. There's, you know, it's far beyond my sort of uh, my sort of level. Uh, I couldn't even begin to do what he does. But each their own. Um, but excellent, excellent stuff he brings out. I wish I could. I wish I could, you know, use that as inspiration and, and do similar stuff. But it's uh, I'm not that arty, unfortunately. Um, but it's a good job that other people are because otherwise we wouldn't see this stuff so uh, well done Stuart and for everyone else go along check his channel out so another thing I want to mention is UKIS uh, that's coming up shortly um, so I'm really looking forward to that that's in July if you're going I'm going along uh, loads of mates going along uh, so all the usual suspects are going to UKIS um, I don't really need to name any names but there's you know, the usual crowd of wood turners um, that you see on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, so keep an eye out for those. I'll be up there having a couple of pints. Um, I owe quite a few people pints, actually, so uh, that, that's going to be expensive. Um, but we'll see what happens when we get up there. So, so without further ado, let's get on with the project. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is get a little tether end on this end um, so we can flip it around and work on it.
All right, so I'm just going to clear off this in. I've got loads to play with. Uh, I only actually want it about that big, uh, including the base. So I've got about an inch, inch and a half to play with there. Uh, I'm just going to have a little play. Right, so I've already realised that there's a few cracks going through. I just want to see how far they go down. This one goes down to about there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, in fact, we're going to keep these sort of branch bits here uh, and then cut it off, probably part it off there eventually. But we're going to keep that bit. So I'm going to turn it down to probably about there-ish. You can see that. So I'm just going to turn this bit down now and see how that looks. So now we have to decide how big the vase is going to be and uh, how we're going to approach this. So here we have the stand. So it's hollow right down there. There we go, all sanded up. Ready for these beasties. So I've done the outside and the inside, what I can still get at them. Um, just means that I get a better surface on whatever is remaining. Um, of course I've got to cut out great big swathes of wood here. 
um, I'm sanding down by hand again but even if it's just the ring that gets polished up really well it's worth it right so with a permanent marker I'm just going to mark out three legs roughly Now these are much wider than they're going to end up, but they just give me some sort of indication of where to go. So all this is going to come out, all this is going to come out, and all this is going to come out. Make it nice and clear. So there we go. But they're going to be about half that that width. Right. This is going to get noisy. And here we are with the um, vertical cuts done. Let's go to the horizontals now. So that's all the cutting for one section done. So let's have a look. Okay, so Carving and sanding to do, uh, and then cutting, and burning, and all sorts of things that I'm doing at the moment. Um, so I will come back to you after the next two are cut out, and uh, we'll go from there. Exciting stuff! I have now removed my sections, and now it's time to use my handy chisels. And I have a smaller one and my Dremel I have cleaned up around there best I can I don't want it to be too perfect now I've got to try and get these sort of flat so I shall try that with a Dremel 